Apple has officially entered the AI race and who mama, they did not come to play. With the launch of iPhone 16, Apple intelligence is now here and it's challenging everything that we know about the business of AI, especially ChatGPT. So we first learned about Apple intelligence back at the WWDC earlier this year, but now we've seen some of the concrete details on how it's actually going to work in your hand. And it is a fully integrated AI system that's going to transform the way that we interact with our devices. Personalized automation, smarter Siri, intuitive photo creation and sharing, this isn't just an upgrade, this is a new paradigm for the way that we interact with AI technology. Because here's the thing, LLMs are now becoming ubiquitous. We're now at a stage where pretty much every major tech company has its own large language model. You're starting to see Google's models in search results. Meta have open sourced their very highly performant model Llama, and of course, Elon Musk and XAI have created Grok, which has a surprisingly high level of performance for such a young company. And the gap in performance between the best models like GPT-40 and Claude, for example, is just not that big. So in future, the real value is not going to be in just merely having a large language model. It's going to be how you deploy it in the real world. And that's something that Apple seems to understand pretty well. Apple intelligence is built for real life, and that's because they can leverage the fact that we all exist in our smartphones every day anyway. When you couple that with the access to data that Apple has, the case for them steamrolling OpenAI becomes clearer still. At the heart of Apple's AI revolution is the new A18 chip, a three nanometer powerhouse designed to handle real-time machine learning with GPUs and CPUs built in. So it seems like the more simple queries won't even have to be sent to a server to be answered. They'll simply be handled on device. That means it'll likely perform much faster than ChatGPT, even in the ChatGPT integration that Apple has built in. Anyone who's used Android devices over the years knows that Apple is very good at this. They take the best features from a new platform they, they perfect them and they integrate them into iOS. They've done it over and over again over many, many years. Now they're doing the same to ChatGPT. They've taken what works in LLMs, improved it and embedded it directly into the iPhone. And this is really where you can see the potential because it's embedded deeply. It can talk to your text messages, it can talk to your emails, it can summarize the various different pieces of information that you're getting inbound every day. This saves you time and it means you don't have to go into a different place to interact with the LLM and then go back to your normal life. It's already there. So what does this mean for OpenAI? Well, they've had an exodus of talent. People like Elias Sutskeva have gone and raised a billion dollars of venture capital funding himself. And the releases that they keep telling us about seem to continue to be delayed. The signs aren't good. Because as I've mentioned, large language models now are becoming pretty ubiquitous. Although GPT-40 really is still a leader and is incredibly strong, it's unlikely to be able to maintain that lead in the long run, especially if it keeps losing talent in the way it has done recently. But of course, they're the people that generated this massive technological wave of progress in the first place. So I haven't lost faith in their ability to surprise us just yet. It looks like they've got a real challenge on their hands because people like Apple are now catching up. People like Google are now integrating AI into their search results. And there are a whole host of other open source models like Llama and Mistral that are really improving every day, every week, every month. So as always, it's going to be really exciting to see where we go from here. It's still so early. If you're still watching, that means you're one of the most engaged viewers of this video. So as always, I'd just like to take a little moment to say thank you very much for clicking on the thumbnail, for sticking with me for this long. I really do appreciate it. And if you're one of the many people who's watched several of my videos and has not yet subscribed, then I really hope you will consider doing so. That's it from me for this week. I'll see you next time.